here for the briefing, and we want to welcome you to the Jamaica House and the Office of the Prime Minister Press Room. We have called this briefing this morning, the night of events which occurred off the coast of Port Antonio yesterday, of which we are well aware. And uh, the Minister of Information has called this briefing to update the country, to update the media, and the international community on the ill-fated events of yesterday. We have at the head table, from my immediate left, from the Ministry of Health, Dr. Lucas, Marilyn Boros Lucas, the Acting Director General of ARTEM, the Office of International Emergency Management. Next to him is the Minister of Information, Senator Faulkner. The Commanding Officer of the Georgia Coast Guard is sitting beside Minister Faulkner. And at the far left, the head of the Civil Aviation Authority, Mr. Leroy Lindsay. Welcome to the briefing. Minister will make a brief introductory statement, and we will take some remarks from the members of the head table after which we will open the briefing for some questions and answers. We also have in the audience a representative from a number of other agencies, including the U.S. Embassy, which we want to welcome you and don't forget Assistant Commissioner Aston Thompson from, from the police. Good morning, or good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so very much for coming. We know it was short notice. <laughs> responded to this unfortunate incident to give you an overview of what is happening. I'm going to give you a brief overview and then First, I will ask the ODPEM and then the JDF to give you an update, and we'll ask the Ministry of Health and the Civil Aviation Authority. As you are aware, on Friday, September 5, 2014, at approximately 12.30 p.m., preliminary reports were received in Jamaica alerting of an undetectable aircraft that was heading toward the island. The initial report was followed by further communications advising that a small private plane had been, become non-responsive, having lost communication with air traffic controllers between the departure and intended arrival locations within the United States. The Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Mag Management, in response to the potential threat scenario, activated the national emergency operations to provide support and coordination to key agencies. Details of the carrier path. Single engine TBM 900 aircraft. Two passengers on board who were US nationals. The flight origin New York, the intended destination Florida. And it ended up where we believe is 14 miles of Jamaica's northeast coast. The craft was projected to land off Jamaica's northeastern coast based on the reported location and fuel levels of the aircraft. And the, forecra the forecast was for the vessel to land in Jamaican waters in close proximity to the northeastern section of the island. On the heels of the activation of the National Emergency Operations Center and the call out of the national response team members, a press conference was held at the headquarters of the Jamaica Defense Force and had in attendance from all the primary and secondary support agencies. As I said today, we have team members from a number of agencies which have responded to this disaster. And I will first ask the director, acting director general of the ODPEM, Mr. Richard Thompson, to give you an update. Thank you very much, Minister. Good morning, everyone. I think in response to, to what the, the Minister Faulkner have said, given her the, the information that she has just read, 
the, the National Emergency Operations Center is still in effect, and the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management is still in their our role as the national coordinator around all aspects of disaster management and emergency management. And we are, we are now coordinating the, the overall operation that include all the members that the minister r reported on, and some of the members here are sitting at the head table. Another component of the operation is in fact that there is a parish mechanism which is in place, and that is, is set up in Portland. And that, that mechanism have members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force and members of the Parish Disaster Committee, which is, which is led by the, the mayor, mayors of the parish. And that is set up in Portland to give support to the overall operation. Because there, there is a landward side of the operation and there is a naval side which is being spirited by the Jamaica Defense Force. And I think you will hear an extensive report, and you will see an extensive report from, from um, Commander um, Gorman when she, when she makes her presentation. I think that will be the highlight of, of, of the briefing, where you will see all the information coming out as to what we have done from yesterday afternoon going in, uh, coming into this morning and what we will, will be doing going forward. You will also get information from the CAA in terms of their overall um, response and their international processes as it relates to the inv investigation coming out of air traffic accident. So, so I, I think that is it for me now, Minister, um, and I will <laughs> hand over to you for you to pass yes. on to the mem other members of the team. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Thompson. And let me remind you that we also have representatives from the police and also from the United States Embassy, and they yes, have been in contact with the family but we're going to ask you to be very sensitive because we want to be sensitive in how we treat information relating to the family. Good afternoon. Um, just by way of introduction, I'm Commander Antoinette Weems Gorman. I'm the commanding officer for the JDF Coast Guard, and I'm uh, coordinating the rescue and or recovery mission at sea. So we have some uh, some information here projected, which I'll just go through for you. Uh, those of I see some persons here who would have been at the briefing yesterday, and you have this information already. But for those who don't have it, uh, we commence our Joint Information Operations Center operations, having received the information regarding this aircraft and its likely impact in the maritime space. The initial report had this aircraft actually going down. Um, first, the first information that I got had it going down 60 nautical miles south of Jamaica. That was further refined and updated to 42 nautical miles northeast of Jamaica. This uh, graphic will show you the path of the aircraft as it was reported on radar, and you'll see that last location where it came off the radar contact. And I must point out that this does not mean this is where the aircraft crashed. It meant this is where it went below the altitude that the aircraft, that the radar would have tracked it. Actions taken by the JDF. We Having received the initial report, would have deployed one patrol vessel to the likely area of uh, the impact, awaiting the further refinement of the information where it went down. So we deployed one offshore patrol vessel and one inshore patrol vessel. The offshore patrol vessel is a 42 meter, and the smaller vessel is a 38 foot vessel. We also started coordination with the relevant agencies. We contacted the Marine Police um, for their support and started coordination with the U.S. Coast Guard who had been tracking the aircraft and had also uh, um, an air, well, they had an aircraft tracking the, the scene and were able to give us more information. Our offshore patrol vessel arrived on the scene and continued to conduct search of the likely area um, overnight. And again this morning, 
when we had better lighting, we had aircraft in the area, and they are still in the area as we speak. This shows you the sum total of the assets, both U.S. and Jamaican, that are presently employed in the search effort. This, yesterday, at approximately that time, showed there at 1540 in that location, that some debris was identified that was consistent with a air, could be consistent with debris from a small aircraft that made a high impact, a large impact from a high altitude on the sea surface. This, these pictures were taken, these positions were marked by flares, and we deployed, we vectored our vessels into the location to try and recover this to see. Th these areas were also consistent with, uh, were also in the same location where we spotted an oil spill which we had lo we reported yesterday. Um, unfortunately, we were not able to recover any of this debris. As we speak, that search area is being um, prosecuted by the assets shown earlier. Next. Uh, that is the search area that the, the U.S. Coast Guard craft is uh, conducting, and all these areas overlap and have been coordinated by the Maritime um, Rescue Coordination Center that operates out of the JDF Coast Guard. Our basic mission at this time is to continue the search to locate possible wreckage and our survivors, and we will continue to coordinate with all the partners as we are doing now. Additional information, uh, the U.S. Coast Guard vessel deployed what is known as a self-locating data marker buoy, and this piece of equipment will allow us further information to refine the search area. What it does, it, is, it, it collects information from what is happening on the sea surface, and it transmits it to satellites, which allow us to further um, refine the, the, the data and the search area that we're looking at. And that's it from the JDF Coast Guard. Okay, thank you very much. We'll now turn over to the Ministry of Health, and we will, we will ask Dr. Marion Bullock-Dukas to give us an update. Sorry, this is not our usual setup, but we call this overnight, so... We didn't get all our teams in place. Some of them are out of town. Good afternoon, Minister, colleagues, members of the media. The Ministry of Health, following advisory of the aircraft emergency, immediately activated its National Emergency Operations Center to direct and coordinate all medical and health aspects of the operations. Hospitals island-wide were placed on alert, in particular the emergency departments, due to the uncertainty of the path of the aircraft. The teams that were placed on assignment for immediate deployment for emergency medical care as necessary were those trained at the advanced life support level. Any other response required with regards to the occupants of the aircraft will be coordinated with the ministries of national security and Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, as well as the Jamaica Constabulary Force and the United States Embassy. The Ministry of Health continues to maintain contact with ODPEM and the Jamaica Defense Force to ensure our most appropriate response, and we have assigned and deployed representatives to the National Emergency Operations Center, as well as to the one located in Portland. All medical and health aspects will continue to be directed by the Ministry of Health. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Leroy Lindsay, who 
is head of the Civil Aviation Authority. And this is quite a laborious process. <laughs> we apologize. <laughs> Would the gentleman will help us to move them? Thank you, Minister. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues. Um, good afternoon, members of the press. Well, we played our part yesterday in tracking the aircraft after it got into, into the Jamaican airspace until it disappeared from the um, radar scope. Um, our prime responsibility from here on um, will be after the aircraft has been recovered. Um, to get into an accident investigation mode. The aircraft was a French made, French built aircraft um, registered in the United States and of course um, unfortunately crashed in Jamaican um, jurisdiction. So there are three entities that will be involved in the investigation. The French authority, the Jamaican authority, and the NTSB from the United States. Uh, the depth we expect um, where the aircraft um, went in um, is something around about 2,000 meters and um, really deep and we might not have the assets to deal with that in Jamaica. Um, the French they have um, volunteered that they will assist um, should we need um, equipment to do to go to those depths to help us um, with the discovery of the aircraft. Um, we will um, name a lead investigating team um, to do the investigation. Uh, there will be one member uh, nominated by the Jamaican Civil Aviation authority. Um, there will be someone um, nominated from the NTSB and we will decide um, at a later date who will be the lead investigator into this, um, into this crash. Um, thank you very much. I think that's, that's all we can say at, um, at this time. Thank you very much, Mr. Lindsay. In order to make it a little easier, Lincoln, I'm going to ask you to move the microphone to the podium. So when the questions are asked, people can just Thank move to the podium and answer. So could you just move it? So we now open the floor. I just ask you, I just ask the journalist to identify yourself, your media houses, and the person to whom you are addressing the question. Left here.
we won't have to say anything yeah. more. You can just Good afternoon, everyone. I don't know if you can see me with the microphones. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to make a few comments. Uh, first of all, we have been in contact with the family, and we're keeping them updated. Uh, we really uh, can provide no more information than that at this point. Uh, I would also like to take this uh, moment to thank the government of Jamaica for its response and its whole of government approach to this tragedy. And I think seeing all the representatives here is, is a good indication of that. Coordination between all Jamaican authorities and U.S. authorities has been excellent. And again, we're, ver we're very, very thankful. This is a, a Jamaican-led operation. And uh, we stand by ready to assist as, as requested. And as you see, we already have the U.S. Coast Guard on, uh, on uh, site. And we also have a couple U.S. Embassy representatives that are in the uh, Portland Command Center. But again, I would like to thank the minister. I'd like to thank the government of Jamaica for all their assistance in this. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. I think there's some more now. Sure. Honorable Minister, um, ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, uh, for JCF, we are responsible for security, um, traffic management, crowd control, close protection services, criminal investigations if needed, and um, so we aim to help in protecting the scene. Um, the matter, from the minute it was reported to JCF, it was placed in the situation room and is attracting the highest um, priority to the extent that every member of the JCF have been sent an email and they continue to receive updates we have briefed them um, and just to remind them that the hours of work may be long based on what is happening out there. A senior officer at the level of assistant commissioner of police and our senior superintendent um, is at the emergency operations center and will continue to have that level of command and control until all is over. We have committed land and sea support um, in terms of our marine asset, uh, two boats from the marine division has been deployed to assist in the search and rescue. And we have commenced um, special coastal patrol um, from St. Margaret's Bay to Manchanil. Uh, we have done briefing with the fishermen right along that area to advise them that if anything has been spotted in terms of debris from the aircraft, they are to report it uh, without delay. And I want to pledge on behalf of the Acting Commissioner of Police, Mr. Glenmore Hines, and all the members of the JCF that we are fully committed and, support, um, and supportive of the search and rescue effort. Thank you very much. Now we open the floor for Okay, um, this will be help in the recovery. Um, should we find the uh, location and uh, find the aircraft? Well, the, the U.S. Coast Guard uh, is in the area, and um, when we find 
uh, when the JDF uh, or the Coast Guard find the, um, anything at all from the crash. Um, and uh, we get a sounding of what might be below on the bottom of the sea. Uh, then we'll decide what sort of asset we need to get down to get things out. At, at this time, yes. <laughs> I'll project my voice so the microphone picks it up. David McFadden from Associated Press. You said earlier that um, you weren't able to recover any of the debris that was spotted on, on Friday. Can you talk a little bit about why that is and if you were still seeing the debris? At this point, um, we would have to assume that those debris that we spotted sank because the time elapsed between when we saw it, marked it, and got there on the surface and didn't find it, we would have to assume that it may have sunk. Are you seeing any, any debris at all at this point? At this point, we haven't seen any debris between last night and this morning. debris continues to float or if there's floating debris, uh, the distance and the prevailing weather conditions would determine that over, over the period of the search. So I could not give you an exact time. Where matters of um, life and loss at sea are uh, involved, you don't want to immediately say it is a lost cause for possible survivors. So um, where that is concerned, um, we, we, we may move between saying recovery and rescue. Um, it, the operation is usually termed by us in our maritime terms as a search and rescue operation. Um, determining that it's a recovery because it's an aircraft. Obviously, we knew that it went in into the water. Um, it also involves recovering the aircraft. How long will you be standing on the ship? That has not yet been determined. Get rid of it. Okay. Um, my response will remain the same as yesterday. At all times during this uh, this incident, the, it was known that it would likely occur in the maritime environment, and that consideration was not necessary. What is this? Is this what's different? We're not going to Can I refer you to the JDF's website where all the capability of the equipment uh, and assets that are available to the JDF are, are, are available for open source information? Yes, Thank you.
What we have to do, um, ladies and gentlemen, is look at each situation as it is and respond to it accordingly. What we were doing yesterday from we got the information coming out of the United States was to treat the situation as an aircraft in distress. And there was no information coming to us that it was anything hostile and, uh, and, and as of such, you, we would not be looking at anything that the media is thinking where the questions have been coming yesterday about shooting down a, a vessel or, or, or an aircraft. Is it a what? relevant question? No, sir, to be honest, I don't think it, it, might, it might be a relevant question, but let us say if it was, then we will treat it then and there based on the given situation, and then we would have made the determination. <laughs> no, but mi Minister, it's the same thing I've just said to him, yeah. that we would have treated, no, we would have treated the situation based on the, how it was and would have taken the necessary action. And that's all, we, I think that's all we will say around that. We would have taken the necessary action given the present situation that would have faced us. Let me hope I can put this one to rest. The government of Jamaica has a number of friendly partners, and I am sure if a situation arose and we did not have the assets to deal with that situation, we could call on our friendly partners. And especially because this aircraft was a US registered aircraft, I am sure, and you must also recall that there were two F F-16s that followed and tracked it for a, a period. So, you know, let us not engage in what-ifs and let us deal with the issue at hand. Thank you. Do I recognize anyone else? Um, any other questions? Can you just remind us any number of vessels involved in the search? All right, for, for that, what we have as a part of the overall mechanism is that the fisheries department is a part of the process, and also we have a kind of a MOU and understanding with the, with the yacht clubs. So, so that for major incidents at sea where, where it would have, the assets of the country, the governmental assets of the country would have been exhausted, then we would get that assistance coming from the, the fishermen, being that a lot of them are registered to the to the, to the fisheries department and their fishing corp, as well as the yacht clubs who would, would have provided assistance for that. We have done many exercises around that, many desktop simulation in terms of that overall operation. Also, you will get, because I, I know the question would have come where some people might be saying, what if it was a larger vessel? And, and what type of operation we would have mounted? There's a national mechanism in place to deal with that, where we would, would have, have to use a lot of volunteers um, to include fishermen and private operators to bring as much asset to bear on the scene in very short time because when you're talking about search and rescue operation, 
you're talking about a very short window in terms of saving lives. And you want to ensure that at the outset you can bring as much asset to bear on the, on the scene of the incident in order to ensure that there will be life saved. And the people in Portland? Yeah, the, peop the, the people in Portland were notified because remember there's a parish mechanism under the National Disaster Framework which, which, were, which is activated and, and they are in Portland now in the command center. So that, that mechanism was in place where just as how Dr. Ducasse put her mechanism on standby, the same thing was done at the, the national disaster level. Remember, it's a comprehensive process where Ministry of, of, of Health is a part of the process, JDF, the police, so all the mechanism was triggered yesterday at roughly about 12.30 when we got the information coming in. There were no distress calls to the um, air traffic control centers. Um, the only communications that we are aware of is the communications made between uh, air traffic control service um, when the pilot asked um, for a descent from um, 25,000 to 22,000 feet. And uh, the clearance was given the pilot read back the clearance, but did not execute the clearance. And there were no further communications with the aircraft after that. When we got the information from the FAA, it was that there were two people on board, and uh, both were unconscious in the cockpit. That has not changed. Cuba, um, as far as I am aware now, um, allowed one U.S. Uh, Charlie 130 aircraft, Hercules aircraft, to fly over um, in tracking the in tracking the um, the immobilized aircraft, and um, the two F-16 um, were not given overflight clearance of Cuba, and they turned back to base. Um, as of now, um, that's the um, activities that Cuba's had. It's an operation, and what you're finding in operation is that you, you do the work because there's a need to do the work. And at the end of the day, when you have completed all the operation and you pull from all the, the members that, that have been involved in the process, then you can crunch the end budget. But to say, to, because it's such a fluid situation, you can't put a figure to it to say, at the end of the day, it will cost us X or Y in terms of millions of Jamaican dollars. However, at the end of the process, when you look at the resources that were employed by the Jamaica Defense Force, ODPEM, Ministry of Health, the, the JCF, and everybody involved, then we can crunch a number at the end of the day to say 
at the earlier sort of overall search and rescue operation, this was the, the end figure. But it's a very, you have to appreciate that it's a very fluid situation. We don't know how long we might be there, for one. We don't know if we will be requiring additional assets. So we can't, we can't tell you for sure, no, what the figures will be. That, that, that is Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the United States Embassy. 